to actually show our card in our app and not only see it by die dumping, I need to do some extra steps, of course. The first step, a very easy one, is to go to my header and here where I have my shopping cart list item, my shopping cart link, I want to display a batch with the number of items in the shopping cart so that in our app here, if I go back, we're able to see a number next to the shopping cart link to see how many items we do have in a shopping cart. So I'll just reformat that, that it's a bit easier to type. So I will have my shopping cart here and then I'll use the bootstrap batch class on a span here to actually display the number of items. For that I'll use blade here, blade expression, my session facade and here I'll check if we do have this card in the session. If so, then I want to get the card and of course then I want to get the total quantity, otherwise I'll display nothing. Of course a different way would have been to use an if statement to conditionally attach or detach this badge, but whatever works for you. So with that if I reload, we don't see anything, but I click add here, we see one, if I click add here, we see two. So this seems to work, that's great. But still if we click on it, we're not taken to the shopping cart and we don't see anything here. So let's work on that next. I'll add the link immediately so that I don't forget it again. So I want to link to a route named product shopping cart. Now in my routes file, I need to create this route. So I'm copying this add to shopping cart route. Of course, change the path to be shopping cart and I don't need a parameter here. The name should be product shopping cart. And here I will just access the get card action, which doesn't exist yet. So let's work on that. I'll add a new function, public function get card. And here I want to be able to fetch my card. So what I'll do here is I'll first check if my session has this card object. So if we do have a card stored in the session, and if this is not the case, that's what I'm actually checking. If this is not the case, then I want to return a view. I will return the shopping cart view. So the view in my shop shopping cart folder, which I haven't created yet. I'll do so in a second. So we'll return this view and I will return products, a variable, which I will set to null. So basically I will return the view, but in this view I'll, I want to check if we actually are able to display some products, if some products are in the shopping cart. And in this case I would return null, so that in the view I can appropriately display something like please add items or anything like that. Otherwise I will, if we do have a card, I'll fetch it here. So I'll fetch it through session get card. And I'll create a new card as before. As I said, I'll always do that. I'll pass the old card just to recalculate everything. And yes, you should be able to use the old card here directly. That's just uh, more of a good step here if you were to add certain functionalities to your card model, which need to run each time you recreate it. For example, if you had a total price and quantity, which um, needs this old card to be correct or anything like that. So back at the product controller, I'm creating my card and then I return view shop shopping cart. Again, I still have to create this view. I'll add or I'll return my products and of course I can fetch them, not cookie, thank you, card items. And I'll return the total price which I can also fetch from my card where I do have this till price um, property. So the last step therefore is to create this view in the shop folder, in the views folder. So shopping cart.blade.php of course. And in here, what I'll do is I'll first copy the beginning of the other file here. So, oops, don't need that, but so that I already got all these sections and so on. And then in the content here, what I want to do is 
I will check if I actually do have my card. And also have an else statement and then close this block to know if I want to simply display a message like your card is empty or the actual items. And therefore, oops, I can actually change this to not pass any products here now that I think about it. So in the case that we don't have a card, I may just return the view since I'm checking this anyways in my view here. Let's start with the case that we do have a card. So we have items in the card. I'll use bootstrap to create a row and then some columns here. And yes, now that I think of it, I could have I left out the MD part. I had a different style before. Anyways, I'm going to leave it here. That's not really a bootstrap course here, right? So I'll add an unordered list in here or an unordered list with the bootstrap class list group. And in there, I want to loop through all my products. So products as product. And products, of course, is the item groups in my uh, shopping cart. Don't forget that I don't have one item multiple times, but I do have multiple items as aggregated groups, kind of. So, oops, that is what I'll loop through. And inside here, I will have a list group. This will get the class list group item. And in this list item, I will have several things. I want to have a batch where I display the quantity, let's say two. And of course, this batch here is a bootstrap class and it doesn't matter where you place this element it will always float on the right that's how it is configured by bootstrap i'll then have my title my product title and i'll soon or i can replace it right now why why not so i can access this with my blade template expression by accessing my product and then the quantity remember we're on the um, on the uh, item group level here. So this will refer to the quantity of each product group. So of Harry Potter, for example, that we have three times the same Harry Potter book in our um, shopping cart. Then the title here. So product. Then I have to access the individual item here. And then the title of that item. Then I'll also add a span here with the CSS classes success. Nope, the classes label and label success. Again, bootstrap classes, of course. This label should display me the overall price for this group. So I'll also enter the expression here, product. And then this is just the price field again on the group level. And with that, I got all the information set up. Now I also want to add a button. This button should be a drop down button where I can, for example, remove one item or remove all of that group and so on. So I'll use Bootstrap again to create a button group here to create a drop down button basically. So this will be a button which gets the classes button, button primary, button X button XS and drop down toggle. So a lot of bootstrap related stuff to have a working drop down looking like button. And then still I for yes, that's a great feature. And then still I forgot the D here, drop down toggle. So now this should be all right. I'll make this of type button and I'll also add the data toggle. Um, attribute here to tell Bootstrap that this button will toggle a drop down. So that's all needed for Bootstrap to work correctly here. Then I'll give it a label of action and I'll add this span with the caret or carry, don't know, class here to have this little error pointing to the bottom so that we see that this is a drop down. So just a little image or icon here. That's the button, but also I need to add the drop down itself. So I can do this by adding drop down menu, an unordered list, which 
represents the menu shown when I click this button. And here I'll have a list item with a link and I'll hook those links up later. And I want to be able to either just remove one item of that. So if we have three times Harry Potter, remove one book or remove all of them. And of course you'll see this working template soon. So that we're almost there, but there are still some things missing. I'll grab all of that code, including the opening tag here even because I'm in good mood today and I will get rid of the unordered list. I will keep the rest here, so the row and the columns to add a strong tag where I in, well, output the total price of my uh, shopping cart. And I can access this with the total price variable, which I'm passing the product controller. If you remember this total price here. So the total price of my shopping cart, I'll copy that one more time. And I'll insert a horizontal line between that price and the next part. And here I want to have a checkout button, which we'll later hook on. Uh, so here I'll add a button of type button. That doesn't work. Type button and I'll give it some classes of button, button success to make it green because everyone wants to click a green button, yay, and give it a caption of checkout. Now in the else block here, I'll also copy this uh, row and column thing, but all I want to have here is a h2 tag saying no items in cart. So that's been a lot of work and yeah, let's see if all of that does work indeed. So we have two items in the shopping cart. If I click here, wow, <laughs> works right away. Of course I was expecting that. So here we see Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. If I go back, that doesn't work at least something. So if I hook up my brand here so that I have an easy way of going back to my root page, the product index page here. So now if I reload that, then even that will work. Astonishing. So now if I add this one here, we see we have three items. That looks great. Those drop downs work. The overall price seems to be correct too. If I add Lord of the Rings two times, we have it now three times. The price still seems to be all right. Great. So with that, we got our working shopping cart. You saw how to store it in session how to configure it dynamically, how to add new items to it, how to output it, of course. And with that, we're well prepared to use it in the next steps of this series. I can't wait to start there and see you there. Bye.